let me let me do our first uh, numerical examples of arbitrage and we can do it in this deterministic world uh, starting with uh, with bonds and, and rates um, and so here is a here is an example i will have um, a zero coupon bond also called a pure discount bond that's just a name for a bond which doesn't pay coupons, only pays the face value at maturity. And the spot rate of such bond, a zero coupon bond, is uh, spot rate is, is the yield of such a bond. Okay? The spot rate is defined by the yield of a zero coupon bond. Uh, and um, the idea in this example is going to be to, to if, I, if I see, if I know how some of the bonds with some maturities and some coupons are priced uh, I may sometimes have enough information to price a bond a different bond maybe with different uh, uh, coupons uh, so so otherwise there might be arbitrage in the market and we are going to assume uh, in this uh, course that there is no arbitrage in the market okay? that's uh, uh, that's an assumption that uh, uh, is pretty realistic. If there is arbitrage, it usually disappears very fast because there is many hedge funds and investors who are looking for arbitrage. And uh, if there is arbitrage, people will find it and, and then it will disappear. So we are, we are going to assume there is no arbitrage and we are going to try to compute things under that assumption. What is arbitrage? Uh, right now, I'm just going to define in, in this my non-random world, I'm going to talk about strong arbitrage, strong kind of arbitrage, uh, which would be making uh, positive profit, sure profit, so probability one, uh, definitely I make profit with, with zero investment. Okay? Uh, so here's, here is our first example of that kind. Let's assume that uh, we know, th we can see that there is a six month zero coupon bond with face value 100 uh, that you can buy for $98. Yeah? And we also see in the market a coupon bond, uh, which is a one year coupon bond, but it pays $3 in coupons in six months and it pays 103 so the face value plus the coupon in 12 months after a year. And the price of that bond is 101.5 or 5, for example. Uh, and the question is, is this enough information to conclude what the yield of the one-year zero-coupon bond should be? Same face value, uh, 100, if it's a zero-coupon bond. Uh, and um, so sh what should be the yield so that there is no arbitrage? Okay? And the idea is, Maybe you can guess in advance before looking at the rest of the slide. Uh, the idea is, okay, we have something here which pays something in six months. And then we have another thing which pays something in six months and something in one year. And combining these two, it looks like we should be able to uh, create a payoff which pays nothing in six months, but it pays something in one year. So I, I want to combine the six-month zero coupon bond with the coupon bond in such a way that, uh, that the six-month payments cancel each other. So I'm going to take short position in one and the long position in the other one. I want to cancel the coupons in six months and only have the payments in one year from my portfolio, which is effectively creating a zero coupon, one year zero coupon bond from these two uh, bonds that uh, that I see how much they are traded for, okay? and then I'm going to apply the the, 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 the the what I mentioned before, which is the law of one price. If I can create the same payoff uh, in a different way, then I know what the price is. The price is the cost of creating that payoff, and if I know the price, then I can compute the yield. Okay? So that that's the idea, and that's what we are going to do. So the idea. Uh, so-called replication idea. I'm going to try to replicate the payoff of a one-year zero-coupon bond by, uh, by payoffs of a six-month zero-coupon bond and a one-year coupon bond. Okay? That, that's, that's what we're going to try to do. All right, so let's... Uh, I'm going to buy... I want to create some payoff 
at the at after one year so i'm gonna buy the, the the bond which pays after one year which was my coupon bond one year coupon bond. So i'm gonna buy that one and it doesn't really matter whether i buy one or two or whatever fractional number uh, the, the whole thing I, could, I can scale the whole thing correctly so I, I just want to have zero payments after six months so if i let's say i buy one coupon bond which means that it will pay me three dollars in six months so i want to kill those i want to cancel those three dollars by a short position so i'm going to sell short the six month bond how many units well i want to have I, I want to have to pay three dollars after six months so if it's paying hundred I'm going to sell short three percent point oh three units of the six month bond okay as usual in this course I'm assuming that I can buy any fractional uh, number of, of, of units of any asset uh, or, or you could scale this and you know buy by uh, uh, 100 coupon bonds here and then three units of the six month bond here uh, in any case if we are just going to assume we can we can buy fractional or sell a fractional uh, number of units so i'm going to sell exactly 0.03 units of the six month bond because that's going to mean that i have to pay three dollars uh, <coughs> instead you know one unit would be hundred dollars 0.03 units is three dollars in six months okay. Uh, so th these two should cancel at l after six months. So let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, th by the way, the cost of this, and this this is uh, what is important. Uh, uh, buying this one costs me uh, one one five or five. That was its price, and then the whole unit of the other one costs ninety eight. Uh, but I'm only selling 0.03 units, so I'm going to get 0.03 times 98 by selling that. So my cost, that, that comes negative to the cost because I'm receiving that money. So the difference is, is the cost, how much I have to pay today to set up this portfolio. Yeah? So I have to pay 98.565. Yeah? Uh, so let's see what happens in the future. In six months, as I already said, I'm gonna I'm going to have to pay three dollars for this short position 0.03 units of the six month bond it expires it matures that bond I have to pay three dollars I have to deliver the bond and I'm receiving from my coupon bond three dollars that cancels as I wanted that was by design and then in 12 months the, the six month bond is, is over that's no longer there in 12 months I only have my uh, uh, I only have my one coupon uh, one year bond which me pays me hundred and three dollars okay? so um, so effectively what I did here I invested 98565 to receive 103 after a year okay? and I don't receive or pay anything in six months I pay 98565 at uh, initially and I gain 103 I receive 103 at the end so I can compute the rate that corresponds to that and the annual rate just from the usual present value formula and uh, if you compute the rate it's something like 4.5 percent okay. otherwise there would be arbitrage in this market uh, you could make uh, money for nothing free money I, I'm going to check that uh, in, in uh, two slides uh, but let's let's uh, so so this is this is kind of a complicated way to get this rate, but I wanted to do this because it, it, it uh, shows us this idea of replication. If I can replicate one kind of payoff, in this case, one year zero coupon bond, by a portfolio of other assets, then I, I know how much that, uh, that initial original payoff sh is worth, uh, because it has to be worth uh, exactly to the c it has to be the value has to be exactly equal to the to the cost of the replicating portfolio okay? that's going to be that is the main economic message of this whole course okay? there is not much more in terms of economics everything else is going to be different assets and different mathematical models for modeling them but the in terms of pricing the main idea the main economic idea is going to be the value it has to be if I can replicate something, the value is equal to the cost of replication. 
we'll see this many times. All right, so I said this is a kind of a complicated way of for this particular example to do this. So let's see a little bit easier way. So you, in this particular example, you don't really have to do it this way. You can you can do it like this. Uh, you can first compute the annualized six-month spot rate. Uh, I know that the six-month zero-coupon bond trades for 98. So I can compute its yield by, by this present value formula. Because it's six months, uh, the number of, of, of periods is, is, uh, is, uh, is one half if I'm compounding only per once per year. Okay. So I put one half square root here. One of the, the exponent is one half for six months. Uh, so I can compute uh, this to be something 4.1233%. Okay. Uh, so now I have the six-month uh, spot rate. Then I look at the one-year coupon bond, and I can decompose its value into what it pays after six months and what it pays after one year. So after, three, after six months, it pays $3. But I know now how to price these $3 because I have the spot rate for the six months, which is 4.1233, and put it to the one half here, because it's after six months. And then, and then I receive $103 from this bond at the end, and I discount by the one year rate, and that's my unknown here, so I get, uh, I get an equation for my one year rate, and it's the same solution as before, something like 4.5%. Okay, so if you if you solve this, you get the same you get the same solution that we got from from the replication argument. Yeah, so it's just a, maybe a faster way to do it, uh, mm, but the other way showed you the logic of, of replication, of the law of one price. All right, so let's let's just check numerically for this example if the rate is not four point five percent, that that there is arbitrage. Okay, so the, the, the price should be, we, we think, or we claim, that the rate should be 4.5%. So for a one-year bond, for the one-year bond that pays 100, the price should be 100 over 1 plus 0 0.0444996. I'll go here to many decimal points, but approximately 4.5%. So the price is something like 95.6942. Uh, and uh, so let's assume the price is not this and see whether we can make money. I'm going to ju just do one example. Let's say the price is less than this. So let's say it's $95. Yeah. Suppose you can, buy it, uh, you can buy it for $95. Uh, and uh, and uh, the claim is then, then there should be a way to make free money, free lunch here. Yeah. So it's always going to be the same principle. Uh, when we look for arbitrage, it's going to be buy cheap, sell expensive. Okay? Uh, you want to buy something which looks relatively cheap uh, compared to something which, uh, which looks expensive. So in this case, I'm assuming that my one-year bond is relatively cheap to what it should be, so I'm going to buy it. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm going to create an, uh, a hedge uh, the up uh, with a with a short position in, in something else, uh, and uh, so I'm going to buy my one year bond, zero coupon, and then wh what am I going to do uh, with to to hedge this? I, I'm going to take I'm going to short the to the whole portfolio that I did two slides ago, because that that portfolio went long would create the one-year bond. Now I want to create the opposite position to the one-year zero-coupon bond. So I'm going to sell short uh, or sell the, the, that replicating portfolio from two slides ago, which means I'm just going to, when I was buying, I, was, I would sell. When I was selling, I would buy. Huh? So, so if, uh, if I go back two slides to remind myself m what my portfolio was, it was buying a coupon bond, uh, the one-year coupon bond, and selling 0.03 units of the six-month bond. Okay? So I, I'm going to maybe change the scale here, but I, I want to now sell the coupon bond and buy the, the uh, six-month bond. Uh, 
so that means that means selling short this portfolio or just selling that portfolio so let me go back to my current slide uh, I, I am going to change the scale uh, so that it matches my one-year bond bond payment. I'm going to go short 100 over 100 over three units of, of that portfolio two slides ago, um, be because that portfolio was paying me 103 at the end, and now I just want 100 at the end. Okay? So I, I'm multiplying by 100 over 103, so that 103 cancels, and I just have 100. Okay? Th this is. You know, I, I could have done it differently. I could have bought here 103 over 100 units of one-year bond and go and don't not do the scaling. You just have to do the correct scaling so that you have the same amount uh, to cancel at, at the end. All right, so I'm going to sell short. I, I bought one unit of the coupon bond in that portfolio. Now I'm going to sell uh, 100 over 103 units of the coupon bond. And I'm going to buy uh, 0 0.03 times 100 over 100 over 3 units of the six-month bond. Okay. So it's exactly the opposite position of that replica in portfolio, and I scale I'm scaling everything by 100 over 103. All right. So if I do this, uh, you can compute that the initial profit is going to be uh, 956942. Uh, which is exactly this number here, uh, which should be the price of the. I mean, this is exactly how we we we, uh, we created that one year zero coupon bond, and this is uh, with this 4.5 percent rate. This this is its price. So if you check the computations here, you will see that this portfolio initially gives you a profit of 95.6942. Okay. After six months, what happens is in this short position, uh, you have to pay three dollars for one unit, so you have to pay three dollars times hundred over hundred and three for hundred over hundred and three units, uh, and uh, you will receive from the six-month bond, uh, you will receive uh, the same amount. Okay, from this position, you are receiving exactly the same amount. That's how we created this uh, portfolio. So that's going to cancel. It cancelled before, it has got to cancel now because it's the same position multiplied by the same number. Huh? Same positions multiplied by the same number. So that cancels. And what happens after one year? After one year, I, uh, I receive $100 for my long position in the one-year bond. Uh, but I also have to pay, I'm short this uh, coupon bond. Uh, which would pay 103 for one unit, so it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's paying 100 for 100 over 100 over three units. So it means I have to pay 100. Yeah. Uh, delivering uh, 100 over 103 units of the coupon bond means I have to pay 100, and I am receiving 100 from my long position, the one-year bond. So that cancels too. Yeah. Uh, that also cancels. Uh, so my total profit. So in the future, everything cancels. Uh, at the beginning, uh, selling short this and buying this, I actually have money left, 956942 left. Uh, but it only cost me, and, and then I also have the cost of this one-year bond, but that was assumed to be 95. So the difference is my arbitrage money, my arbitrage profit. It's positive, uh, and that's exactly how I make money. If the bond price is not corresponding to 4.5%, but to some higher yield and therefore lower price, I can make arbitrage. Okay. And this would uh, this would also be the case if the price was higher than 95.6942. Then I would just reverse. I would just reverse the positions here. When I buy, I sell. When I sell, I buy. Okay. Otherwise, it would be the same. You can check that if you want. As, as an exercise. Okay? So this is the principle of arbitrage. If I have assets in the market with which I can replicate other assets, the prices have to match. Okay? And this is the principle we will be using a lot, uh, especially, especially uh, this, you know, uh, for this lecture and then the next few lectures. All right.